Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating a dynamic YouTube subscriber bell in Cinema 4D. So quite a few people have asked how I created the animated subscriber bell at the end of my YouTube videos, which looks a bit like this. So today I thought I'd show you how, so you can add it to your videos. But first, if you're starting out in 3D and motion graphics or looking to take your skills to the next level, I just wanted to mention a website I've been using a lot lately called Skillshare, who are sponsoring this video. Basically, Skillshare gives you unlimited access to more than 25,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating each project and when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got two CG Shortcuts courses on there now, with our latest course launched just last week, covering a bunch of stuff beyond what we normally go into on YouTube. So if you want to test out Skillshare, there's a link below for a free two-month trial that will give you access to the entire catalog of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D and the first thing we wanna do is create our bell. And we'll do that with our pen tool, this guy right here. Let's click with our middle mouse button and then we'll click it again over the front view here. And now we just wanna draw out a bit of a bell shape. So let's put a point right here on our Y axis of our scene. And we'll just drag this out and put another point down here Try to make it nice and curved. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can refine this, but we want to make something roughly this shape. Then we can come up and grab our move tool and make sure we're in point mode. Then we can just reposition these to get something a bit more bell looking. Yeah, I think that will do for now. Now with that spline selected, we'll come over here and grab a lathe. Remember to hold Alt so it automatically applies itself. And now we can see a bit of a bell shape. And if we switch views again, it's looking nice and 3D now, but I'm still not too happy with the shape. Let's tweak this a bit more. We'll switch back to the front view and we'll grab our spline. This point up here needs to be right on that line. And the easiest way to do that is to just set the X axis to zero. Then we'll just tweak that point. We'll grab the handle and try to make that a bit flatter and bring it in just a tad. And if we turn that lathe off, it might be a bit easier to see. Then we'll just tweak these points a bit and switch that back on. Then back to our perspective view. That's looking a lot better. But you'll notice our bell is looking pretty thin. We need to give it a bit of thickness. So let's go back to our front view and we'll turn that lathe off so we can see this. We'll hit Control A to select all those points. Then we'll right click and come down to Create Outline. Then all we have to do is click and drag out this way and that'll give us our thickness. So I'll switch our lathe back on and scooch back over to our perspective view where everything's looking hunky-dory except the bottom here is looking a bit flat. If we come up and turn on the lines, you can probably see that a bit better. So let's switch views and sort that out. If we come over here and grab our rectangle selection tool, we'll grab these guys, then right click and we'll choose chamfer. And if you click and drag, you might get the same issue as me where the end here collapses. But if we undo that and right click again and this time grab the create point tool and create a point here and one over here. Then back to our rectangular selection. We'll right click again and grab that chamfer. And now if we click and drag, that should work nicely. Then lathe back on, switch views and we're in business. We'll turn the lines off. And that's looking beautiful. And if we wanted to smooth this out a little bit, we could grab the lathe and just bring up the subdivisions here. And that's nice and smooth now, but we'll undo that and leave it at 24 because we're gonna be using some dynamic calculations later. And we wanna keep our geometry as low as we can. So we're done with this part of the bell. Let's rename our lathe to bell. And now we need to add the little handle at the top which for all you bell enthusiasts out there is actually called the cannon. So let's come up here and we'll bring in a torus. And if we have a look under the bell, there he is. Let's switch views. It's come in the wrong way as usual. So the first thing we need to do is change the orientation to plus Z. Then we'll grab our move tool and switch it back to object mode. 
Then we'll just move this right up here so the center is at the top of our bell. Then we'll scale this down a bit. Something like that. Then back to our perspective view. And that's looking pretty good to me. So the next thing we want to do is the little dangly bit that hangs down inside the bell here, which is actually called the clapper. So back up here, we'll grab a cylinder. And you can see that guy in here. Let's switch views again. And we'll grab this little bit here and scale it up. And then we'll move it to about there. Maybe it could be a tad longer. Now we need to put a little ball at the end of this. So we'll come up here and you guessed it, we'll bring in a sphere. And all we have to do with this guy is move him right there at the end of our cylinder. So that's pretty much it for the modeling part. We can hide that grid now so it doesn't get in the way. We'll just switch it off in the display filters here. And now we're ready to animate this thing and make it dynamic. But first, let's come up here and tidy this up a bit. We'll rename our torus to Canon and we'll parent our sphere to our cylinder and rename that clapper. And now we wanna put all of these into a group. So we'll come over here and grab a null and we'll rename that null to bell and we'll switch views. We want the axis point to be in line with the top of the bell here in the middle of our torus. And we'll come over here, we'll collapse that for now and we'll drag all of these guys into our null and one more look in the perspective view. Okay, so now we want to animate this from our nulls pivot point up here and make our bell start ringing. Now you could animate this by hand, but I'm feeling pretty lazy, so I'm going to use a vibrate tag. So with our bell null selected here, we'll go to tags, cinema 4D tags, and right down the bottom here, we'll grab the vibrate tag. So we've got a few options down here. We just want our bell to randomly rotate from that axis. So we'll come down here and enable the rotation. We'll zero that one out and we'll put 10 degrees in each of these and the frequency looks fine. Let's play that back and have a look. And that's looking pretty cool, but our clapper is just following along with the animation. We want this guy to sway around under here dynamically and react with our animation in a realistic way. So let's make our clapper dynamic. We'll grab it and tags. Then down to simulation tags, we'll grab a rigid body. And we want our clapper to collide with the outside of the bell here, so our lathe. So let's come up to tags and we want to make it a collider body, this guy right here. And now if we play that back, our clapper explodes out of the bell, which is not what we want. So what's going on? The best way to check this is to hit control D on the keyboard, which will bring up our project settings. Then over here under dynamics, and the visualization tab. If we turn that on, we should be able to see how these dynamics are being calculated. And we won't see anything on the first frame, but if we just play forward a bit, we get our explosion. And now you can see this big yellow shape here. And that's actually the shape the dynamics is using to calculate the collisions. And if we just go forward one frame so we can see what's happening straight away, the green shape here is how our clapper is being calculated and it's intersecting our yellow shape, which is causing the explosion. So ideally, we want that yellow shape to resemble our bell shape a lot more closely. So let's go and take a look at our tag. And down here under the collision tab, we have the shape. At the moment, it's set to automatic, so it's just having a quick guess as to the shape of our bell. But if we change this to static mesh and go forward a frame, that shape now becomes exactly like our bell. And now we'll get a much more accurate simulation. Let's give it a try. And that's more like it, no explosions this time, but our clapper is drifting off into space. So before we fix that, we don't need our dynamic visualizations on anymore. So let's hit control D and switch those off. Then we'll line this up and take another look at our simulation. The gravity in our scene is pulling it down, but we wanna attach the top part of it inside the bell, so it swings on an axis. But we also wanna keep it dynamic, so how do we do that? We need to come up to simulate, dynamics, and we'll bring in a connector. And we've got quite a few options down here to play with, with the type here being the most important. At the moment it's set to hinge, which is not quite what we want. We need something with a single pivot point that'll allow our clapper to rotate on any angle. So if we click this, 
We've got even more options, but the one we want is the ball and socket. And now it's asking for two objects. Object A will be the ball of our ball and socket. In this case, it'll be the cannon or the torus up here, as the middle of that needs to be the anchor point. So let's grab that guy and drag him into here. We can just leave this to center of mass. So our pivot point is right in the center of this object. Now for object B, that's going to be the socket of our ball and socket. In this case, it's the clapper. So same deal. Let's drag that guy into this spot. So let's just move this back into position and we'll give it a play. And that's looking good. We're almost there. Although if we take a look under the bell, you can see our clapper seems to be floating around a bit in there and it's not pivoting from the spot we want it to. You'll notice when you've got your connector selected, you get this little blue line in here, which is basically showing how it's connected. And if we switch to the front view, you can see that little line in here. And if we play that back, you can see what's going on here. We actually want this little blue line to end up here. All we need to do if we just rewind that is come up and grab that guy and move it up to where we want it to pivot from, which is right at the top of our bell. And now if we play, it's swinging the way we want it to, kind of like a pendulum. Let's get a better look at that in our perspective view. Cool. I think our animation could be a bit more extreme though. We want it to look like it's actually ringing. Let's go back to our vibrate tag and we can probably crank these values up a bit. Let's try 30 degrees. And we'll play that back. Now that makes me want to subscribe. But if you don't want this wiggling all over the place like that, you can set one of these to zero and it'll just swing in one direction, just like that. And we could extend our timeline out so we can see more of this. And if it's still looking a bit too sporadic for you, another thing I like to do is turn on the regular pulse, which gives it a bit more of a ringing motion. Although you can get some crazy stuff happening if the frequency is up too high. Let's pause that and rewind. And we'll just bring that frequency down to one. And that looks a bit more stable. Another option you could try if you're having issues is hitting control D again. And back in our dynamic settings, under the expert tab this time, you could try upping the steps per frame, which should improve the accuracy of your simulation. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Hopefully you can use this effect and get yourself a load more subscribers. You could even subscribe to our channel. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. So it's now the moment you've all been waiting for. The winners of this month's Abstract Shapes Challenge. In third place, winning the $50 Daz 3D voucher is James Ager and his alien inspired abstract shapes. In second place, winning the $75 voucher is Mohammed Ahmed and his glowing abstract spheres. In first place, winning the $100 Daz 3D voucher is Nicholas Varela with his super detailed abstract shape scene. And this month's CG shortcut staff pick goes to Johnson Skiup for another awesome abstract shape scene. Big thanks to everybody who got involved. We had some really amazing artwork this month. Our winners have chosen a bunch of different themes and our Facebook group has voted on the next challenge, which will be hashtag nature. So hop into your software of choice and start creating nature themed artwork. There's a link below with full details and how to enter. Good luck and I'll be back soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.